My Hero Academia Chapter 420 kicks off with a flashback of Kurigiri calling himself a protector. We're then reminded that he took a Razorhead and President Mike away from the fight. President Mike demanded to know where they were. Standing on top of an iceberg in the middle of the ocean, he let Aizawa know that their communicators weren't working. They had no idea what was happening elsewhere. While punching him, President Mike remembered the villain claiming to be Shigaraki's protector. Annoyed that the warp gate user stopped moving, President Mike insisted that he wake up. He believed that if the monster wasn't their friend, he should just fade away and leave them with their memories. He told Aizawa that they shouldn't have given him the benefit of the doubt. They're relying on a corpse was wrong. But before he could continue punching, Aizawa grabbed his arm to stop him. He could see tears. President Mike thought that Eraserhead was talking about him and immediately denied the possibility. But looking down, Aizawa specified that he was talking about Kurogiri. President Mike argued that it was just the rain, since the villain doesn't even have tear ducts to cry from. Besides, he's a Nomu, one that separated Eraserhead from Shigaraki and put everyone in danger. Mike believed that they absolutely needed to wake up the villain so they'd be able to return to the fight. After that, he wanted to destroy the thing once and for all. He told his friend that it wasn't worth the trouble, that they should forget that glimmer of hope they both saw at Tartarus. He reminded his old classmate that they aren't students anymore. They are in their 30s. And Eraserhead reminded him that Shirokumo died as a UA student. President Mike winced as Eraserhead clung to the darkness. He remembered their friend's face emerging from it. Aizawa had to wonder why the Nomu hadn't gotten rid of them. He could have easily dropped them from high up and been done with it. President Mike closed his eyes as Kurogiri made a conscious noise. The memory continued. Eraserhead explained that back at Tartarus, they managed to reveal a bit of light within him. From there, they just mixed him up and broke him. That no matter how much light they add, the darkness will always remain. And that's why the addition of darkness, thanks to Spinner, was able to work. Eraser had wondered if President Mike understood. As teachers, he believes they have the responsibility of guiding students of UA until they graduate, because that is where their origins reside. This collective memory was enough to make the darkness of Kurogiri swell into a gateway for them to use. A distorted voice then called out to President Mike. He wiped his eyes as he mentioned memories. From there, a partially illuminated and crying Kurogiri expressed that memories never fade. Back at the control room, a call was received. Aizawa called out to Tsukauchi, and before the detective could get carried away with his questions, Eraser had asked if Monoma was still around. The officer explained that the kid suffered a head injury and is in the process of receiving medical treatment. And imagine if that changes his personality and he stops being so obnoxious. In that case, Aizawa asked the detective to send him the coordinates of every hero that can still fight, no matter what battlefield they're on. Tsukauchi questioned the request for a moment before realizing what it meant. And Eraserhead's first stop was a UA shelter. A handful of heroes turned in Eraserhead's direction when he suddenly appeared. Ectoplasm was shocked and wondered how the hero got inside. Aizawa let him know that Kuragiri was operational again. And right now, he was on standby with President Mike outside of the shelter. Eraserhead wanted all the heroes that were in charge of protecting the civilians to come with him. Ectoplasm was skeptical about using Kurogiri's help. Eraserhead admitted that he wasn't sure how much longer the Nomu would be able to last, so they needed to hurry up. Several civilians looked in his direction nervously. That's when someone spoke up, wondering if they'd be able to make it to the front lines in an instant. It was Death Arms. Despite hanging up his suit in the aftermath of the first war, he decided that he wanted to join the fight. And right along with him was none other than Astro, the main character of Horikoshi's previous series, Barrage. It even looks like he's wielding his signature weapon, the Org, as his quirk. Despite not being famous with his series being canceled prematurely, he insisted that he's a hero too, and wanted to fight alongside them. At the same time, the live stream of Deku's fight was still playing, but the visuals don't really line up. We already saw everyone reacting to Deku dealing with Shigaraki's finger cluster. Yet here, we see Deku with Black Whip and his full costume. Maybe they're running highlights or something. Eraserhead nodded and told them all to get to the main gate. The civilians all watched this happen. Then, the guy that was adamant about Deku not returning to UA began taking off his shirt. He insisted that Eraserhead take it to a hero who might need it. Which is hilarious because we mentioned how this man seems to only own a single shirt in a previous chapter. Eraserhead looked at it, unsure of what to make of the gesture. 
But when he looked up, he saw that several others decided to extend similar gestures. Supplies of all kinds were offered. The coolest hero then expressed his gratitude. By this point, almost every battle had concluded. And thankfully, there was still a good number of able-bodied heroes left. The only other ongoing battle was taking place at Takoba National Stadium. The heroes there were dealing with a Tartarus escapee who specialized in drawn-out fights against large groups. This guy's name is Gashly, the baby tree. His design is really ominous and pretty cool. His quirk also seems pretty disturbing. It's a shame that this is the only thing we'll ever see from him. Which reminds me that we never received anything from that one foreign villain with dreads that showed up to help all for one. Zero, Sato, Ojiro, and even the space hero 13 were here. 13's quirk black hole is really destructive, so hopefully she doesn't need to hold back against all for one. Several heroes emerge from the warp gate to help defeat Gashly. And moments later, Eraserhead and Deku's classmates showed up. It was time for them to commence phase three of the divide and conquer operation. Just like Endgame, several portals appeared all around them. The Demon King questioned if they had all arrived to be made quirkless. Seemingly unfazed by these sudden appearances and their superior numbers. Deku called out to his teacher and was immediately told not to move. Averting his eyes a bit, Eraserhead questioned how long it had been since Deku lost his arms. The kid wasn't really sure since the damage occurred while he was in Shigaraki's mind. To himself, Deku questioned everything. He was certain that All for One had been consumed by Shigaraki. While fighting the All for One consciousness on the UA Flying Fortress, the Demon Lord kept mentioning how he suppressed Shigaraki and completed the fusion. But that wasn't true. There was no doubt in Deku's mind that All for One had been absorbed and no longer existed. In fact, when he hit Tenko's core, All for One should have disappeared too. So he's seriously wondering who this guy even is. And oh my lord, we might actually have a Kaguya situation on our hands. Is this the voice of the singularity or something? I'm honestly a bit confused by this. I mean, in the previous chapter, he was very much an All for One minded entity. He spoke of manipulating Shigaraki and provided us with an in-depth explanation to go along with it. The villain also referred to Yoichi as his little brother. So does it think that it's all for one, but is actually something else? Yeah, I am a bit stumped by this inclusion. I mean, I don't see any reason for this to be anyone other than all for one, at least for our satisfaction's sake. But I just hope that whoever this is, it's not too ridiculous. The Razorhead looked at Deku. He then revealed a small horn which looks like one of those cone-shaped chips. Flashing back to moments earlier, Eri approached Eraserhead inside of the shelter, and he was shocked by what he saw. Eri knew that he wouldn't let her go anywhere that was too dangerous, and that's why she wanted him to bring her horn to Deku. Eraserhead was disturbed by the fact that she broke off her own horn. He wondered how she managed to do it. Eri admitted that she received a bit of help. Eraserhead swiftly turned to yell at Ectoplasm, and his colleagues swiftly apologized. But he admitted that Eri had learned from both the rational and irrational ways of her guardian. Now that she understands her quirk a bit more, Eri is sure that her horn will be useful since it is still a part of her. And Aizawa still wasn't happy. After all, this sort of thing could damage her quirk forever. And just like that, all of the hype for Eri's heroic career may have just gone down the drain. Or, fingers crossed, this simply reveals a new facet of it. But Eri remained resolute. Really, she wanted to do the same thing for All Might and Bakugo, but couldn't. With tears filling her eyes, Eri remembered Jiro singing. That's what she wants to do. She told her adoptive father that Deku and the others let her have a good time. So once everything is over and the dust settles, she wants to sing for them. Returning the favor by helping them in the same way that they helped her, which is very touching. Even if it isn't much, Eri wants to fight too. Aizawa then pierced Deku with Eri's horn. The human Dragon Balls of My Hero Academia has instead been used as a single sensu bean. Ectoplasm let Aizawa know that Eri wasn't able to store up a lot of energy, so it wouldn't be too useful. The rewinding process would be far slower. It would take about two or three minutes. From there, Deku's arms began to miraculously return. The Razorhead told Deku not to die until he hears Eri singing. A sentiment that left the boy crying. Now, admittedly, it does feel a bit cheap that Deku lost his arms and is already regaining them in the following chapter. 
I mean, even when Naruto and Sasuke died during their final war, the tension and hype were allowed to build up for 9 chapters which was from the end of January until the beginning of April. But to be fair, Bakugo was dead for over a year, and fans have been begging for things to wrap up, so whatever. It was then expressed that although they're all exhausted, just knowing that Deku is trying his best is enough to make them all move. So, it's the Demon King all for one, or whoever this villain is, versus Deku, Eraserhead, Momo, Kaminari, Mineta, Shoji, Koda, Ojiro, Sato, Sero, Gang Orca, Burnin, Shihai, 13, Death Arms, Astro, Present Mike, Kurogiri, Ectoplasm, Rock Lock, Lady Nagan, Invisible Girl, Ayama, Wash, a bunch of filler characters, and some other random faces I'm sure I've forgotten. That doesn't exactly sound like a balanced fight to me. There's also the fact that All For One's body suffered considerable damage in the Vestige world. He no longer has access to Decay, and his danger sense has been compromised by his overwhelming hubris. Shigaraki's use of the quirk All For One has been pretty abysmal, even when it wasn't being suppressed by Erasure. And that goes for its original user as well. Despite having the power to steal quirks, Shigaraki's list of powers is barely different from anything we saw from All For One. Going all the way back to the beginning of Season 3. All the other villains have been defeated. To validate the sheer number of heroes joining this battle and preserve any sense of danger or suspense, All For One will need to do something major. And I'd like to remind you all that not a single hero has died during this final war arc. And aside from my suspicions about Oyama, I don't really see anything pointing in that direction. So at the very least, let this man steal some quirks. Deku aside, the best quirk All For One could possibly steal right now would be Eraserhead's Erasure. All For One already let Tokoyami slide. At this point, seeing as Deku's arms are growing back, the only lasting damage to anyone in Class A is Jiro's missing earlobe. Mind you, all of these heroes are injured. Kaminari couldn't even walk on his own a few moments ago, and already overused his quirk. But that is not a total disadvantage on account of Quirk Awakenings. Being pushed beyond their limits and on the brink of death could make these heroes even stronger. And All For One knows all too well how dangerous heroes can be when their backs are against the wall. All they need to do is stall for 2 to 3 minutes. Then, Deku can re-enter the fight. In the comments, let us know what you think about all of this, especially the whole different villain thing. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.